Welcome to Isn't It Obvious, where things are obvious. <laughs> That's going to be the intro. <laughs> Welcome to Isn't It Obvious, your weekly half hour-ish of discussions, rants, and diatribes from your favorite three people, no one sitting at this table. Anyway, <laughs> isn't it obvious that teachers should be paid more? Teachers? Yeah, yeah. Everyone should be paid more. Wait a minute, guys. This doesn't make sense. You can't just say teachers should be paid more and then just, like, what do you mean? How how much more? T- like, teachers. More than what they currently make. Right? I, I know that. Teachers in a federal more. setting, public education, should be offered more of a salary Tell me for the you... sake of making it more incentivized for people to attempt to go into that profession. What's the average uh, income for a teacher? I would only imagine less than 40 grand a year. That's barely a living wage. Yeah. Many teachers give their own finances to support their school districts. I know. They buy the, like, supplies for their classroom. Right. So they should get more. Agreed. They have a really important... Role in the future of America? Yeah. Role. Sure. We'll go with role. But more than that. hundreds of kids a year. Yeah. And they definitely... The role modeling part, like, to sit in a classroom for eight hours a day, you listen to your teacher. Like, there's certain people who mentor you. Teachers who, like, impact the way you think. They give you not only the tools, like, they they force you into these really uncomfortable situations where you have to do stupid group projects and you like regret it for your whole entire life but at the same time you have those those teachers who really inspire you to maybe learn something more than i don't know like i had this really cool teacher biology teacher and she was just she was fun like she was really fun i did really good in that class because she was so good and i think if i had more teachers like her i could have done something more in the stem no i was gonna say that there's two arguments here that i don't quite understand teachers to be paid more versus the the general burden of society society to pay these teachers. There is a flip side to what the market demands when it comes to paying a public servant or a service funded by the state. And it goes to the argument that hard work isn't being rewarded as much as it should be, or even maybe a more noble one, that this service is essential for a functioning society. I'll preface my argument opposed to teachers' unions, because I personally have issues with unions myself. I feel everyone should be able to argue their own status. Then you have the element, another dimension mentioned that most other occupations in the states don't have to have anymore which is sad which is the decline of unions but teachers have unions and then on top of that like my experience with a teacher was very opposite to yours Sarah where like I've had some shitty teachers they did teach me a lot we'll we'll put it that way but (laughs) not anything good I had a math teacher come to me and like you don't really have a future in math and I was like okay that's not very motivational and so like you have these type of teachers that (laughs) shouldn't be teaching that shouldn't be teaching or the old teacher uh was this in your high school tutelage yes do you know whether he had said that to other people not that I know of and nobody else talked negatively about him or people anything like that. People generally and genuinely think that this is a good teacher. So okay. you kind of have this weird setup where it's like, yeah, teachers are in a position of power, of influence, of motivation, and to be able to kind of give guidance. And I don't know if his guidance was a malicious one or a truthful one or a, you need to hear this one. Look, you're almost an adult now. You probably should know this isn't in your cards. Right. So G- this is Given a, your current career, you have a career in math. Right. So this kind of the hilarious part of it is that... Is it hilarious? Or was he... This kid needs kicking in. I don't know. Like, that's the thing is I took it... How do you think that works, though? Like, I'm sorry. I hate the Snape approach. Degrading a student and saying they don't have a future in something or saying... Being basically the naysayer who's like, I'm gonna... Like, I'm gonna inspire this kid with negativity. That doesn't... Being a younger sibling... When people say, I can't do something, it makes me try much harder to do that. Mm. I'm from totally opposite, but I'm also... Right, yeah, you're an older sibling. I, you don't says, have that. No, but when someone says no to me, I'm like, okay, whatever. All right, I'll move on. Sure. Next thing. Because you don't have that chip on your shoulder that you need to prove that person wrong because you didn't have an older sibling. I, uh, I yeah. also would agree. Okay. The other thing, too, that I found even more destructive than the first example, but just odd, is that I had a teacher that was really loved in history. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people that were pretty clever folk that probably should have went to maybe a different career path if they elected it. But in this case, there was a sizable amount of people that went to history and to philosophy and to English, that type of land, because this guy was so 
so compelling in his arguments and everyone kind of looked up to him as an intellectual. And my reaction to that is this is a Pied Piper. Yeah, this guy is particularly good and he's a really motivating teacher, but look at the writing on the wall. We need more technical staff. We just need more bean counters. We need more marketers. We need more... Not more philosophers. We just need more business. You know, like my brain was set on stop doing what you want to do in life and just become no. a wheel what in a really cog in a do. machine that <laughs> was how i grew up <laughs> but that's a reflection of the circumstances in which that teacher came to that position of a teacher i disagree right. with you Phil. he went to college in 60s probably 70s yeah. maybe early 80s mm -hmm. and went with that philosophy degree and was like i'm gonna be the next just great writer what i say people will remember for years then that didn't happen so he became a teacher mm. because that's the safe fallback for when you're a liberal arts major He's technically right. been remembered for years phil remembers him i said people not person hey i'm sure <laughs> all those other people who were inspired to go into the humanities also remember this teacher i'm not saying the humanities is bad and that his idea of luring people i, I think more people I, see it. I think more people should be in humanities i, I mean, think it's the, really actually valuable oh it absolutely is maybe that's just us two versus you phil but maybe that's because you're the engineer and i'm an artist so maybe there's some clear bias here. I'm, but I'm glad I have a tag in this situation. You are the <laughs> you are the historian in this group that screws us up with dates that you just mockingly throw out and we're like, yeah, I think Martin Luther was in the 19th that... century. That sounds right, guys. Okay. When is that holiday? I don't know. <laughs> no, I think that I don't really have any love for folk that go to the humanities without the sense of risk and reward. This is a terrible statement here, and this is what I'm going to tell my children, which, you know, God help us all, <laughs> and especially them. Honestly, the margins of being a successful liberal arts humanities discipline is there. And if you're very good, then I would recommend to take it. Because what is the point of living if you're just going to be a cog in a machine and hate every moment of it? But that's, that's a better question to have at the side of that we're making and you telling your kids to become a cog and fit more comfortable and fitting I as opposed to trying to be like some square in that cog. That can work, but not work all the time. You just have to work harder to make it work. I, I am trying to go against my programming, which is as a kid, I've been taught, like, be the best cog in this machine possible. And then right now, this world needs more accountants or something like this, right? And it's like, oh, great. I don't really like that. It's like, oh, it doesn't really matter. It pays the bills. Just go for it. And that's the type of philosophy that I guess my generations of my family had. Like, whatever is the most practical and no heavy lifting indoor job. And now that I'm an adult, I'm like, that's like a really terrible way of living a life. I would rather argue that if you want to go to humanities, then do so. But you're going to face this onslaught of competition. There's not a lot of competition for bean counters, but there's a lot of competition for people who are thinking creatively and want to use their brain laterally that have a vested interest in what history is or being able to dissect great literary works of art that's fun stuff to me but look at this balance sheet i want to know what the roi is in the next five years like this is just drudgery work and so when i mention market forces i mention in a sense of like what is the market willing to pay for a value of effort a value that they can produce outward an output but never along in economics do they talk about how much effort was made in this they just care about what your output is and so a teacher who does great effort is not going to be rewarded in our market because who cares about effort i don't care if well, their this... output is all of the children who are going to be in those jobs all of those jobs in the future that are going to benefit society that's the optimistic side of it but also <laughs> From my standpoint, where you take out unions, where it's guaranteed jobs, last one is the first one out type of employment mentality. If you have it where there's higher stakes to be employed in that profession, then your output is higher as well. So you might get 70 grand as a starting teacher, but you do not have a guarantee of employment unless you deliver sales. I'm implementing, as much as I hate to say this, some free market mentality into the education system. But if you take out the guaranteed and you take out those teachers that years and years and years receive complaints, but they have pseudo tenure in F public tenure. education. F yeah. tenure. Yes and no, because it's signing F a tenure. tenure in some situations like signing a contract. Yeah, sort it's of. It's like a baseball contract, not a football contract. Baseball contract, you're still paying that person for their full. And football, it's expendable. And I would prefer if teaching was more of a football contract. This where is they where they traded and... Not necessarily, not necessarily treated, but if there is a failure to deliver, that then there will be consequences. 
classrooms. But if you increase pay more for teachers, you will have people out of high school with your good experience and your bad experience. I want to or don't want to be that. Right. And then that will have more of an impact elsewhere. So Because there, there's no drive to be a teacher. That's disagree. What? Well, There's a lot of people who want to teach. Heck, my uh, future sister-in-law wanted to be a teacher. The other reason she didn't was not pay enough. Yeah. Well, and... Well, you don't also, like, really choose where you work. You just kind of go where you did. No, you kind of go where there's a job. You go where there's a job, and if you have no experience, good luck. There is too much education involved in being a teacher. The requirements you're supposed to fulfill... Yes, I love having teachers that aren't educated cite my... No, 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 but like social studies. My problem is you're you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on an education to teach other people, to educate other people for pennies, it feels like, in comparison to the debt you have to serve for getting that job. Right. This is like a classic problem of what is school really for? I mean, this is the problem I have when I know I am being like the devil's advocate here, but like when you do market forces and then output, I'm like, well, what does that mean? Output to a test? So that you have X amount of students that have this percentage of test value so that your school has this amount of money back from the district because it's recognized as a high performance. Or is it, oh, on a society perspective, we want kids to have critical thinking skills because that's certainly not the truth. And then the other side of it is like, well, where do these teachers come from? Well, they come from universities. Well, what's the purpose of a university? Oh, to enlighten people, to be a better citizen, to have lateral thinking and to be able to explore different like no that's total bs like the idea of a university as it is today is a a job training certification process but there are some aspects of critical thinking whether you're going through economics or going through the humanities there's a matter of critical thinking that is reflected in your grade correct but the main goal to a university is not to say to people like look i went to the university of minnesota and i got this degree and therefore i am a now well-adjusted balanced and understood person of this world I have a caffeine addiction. I don't. No, nope. it's I am qualified to do X. Yeah, I'm qualified yeah. to do X, and I will trade services. For I will. Life. I will be the cog in your machine. Right, <laughs> and it's, and people argue like, no, no, that's not the purpose of universities. Historically speaking, they're meant for a place of enlightenment. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because if that was the case, then 3.9 years of university and not getting that degree would be valued at 3.9 years of worth that worth of that school i should be able to go get a job because it's like well i did 3.9 of four depending on your grades depending on your grade if your gpa is like 2.7 you had 3.9 years like that's way different than someone who actually committed at a 2.9 that's what i'm saying it's a 3.9 but it's different it's it's a valid statistic to pay attention to it is it it seems like completionist it makes more of a dent compared to what your gpa is the yeah you have to get that four years in and then now you're able to sit at the table and now we can talk but if i had 3.9 and i had to drop off the last semester because my nana was sick or something like that and then but what was your gpa oh it was stellar it's like it doesn't matter to me kid if don't have that education really did matter that wouldn't be that of a harsh step function as an employer though i don't want someone who's not gonna ever finish their damn projects i don't want someone who's just gonna <laughs> sit That's- incredibly fair i mean as an employer i i don't want to have someone sitting two weeks you know into a two-day project i know you had x and y and z come up and i know your life's hard but i need to run my business you get some forgiveness i'm hey, an I'll, understanding employer but i'll give you 80 percent of the job because you completed no 80% of your no no <laughs> you're fired i'm going to hire someone who's going to be a completionist. I'm going to hire someone who's going to get their fucking shit together and get their work done. Regardless of, sorry, but sometimes shit happens. You know, you get hit by a truck. Something happens. Your your life goes off the rails. It does. It does. It happens. But, and I feel like most employers would be understanding. But at the same time, if there's like a history of that, where it's just one thing and then the next and none of your projects are getting... Like, eventually, you're going to lose your job. So if the name of the game is... You want a com- completionist. You want to be a completionist so that you can get this thing so you can get a job. And then you get a job as a teacher. You're playing this game wrong. Yeah. Because there is no way you're going to be able to pay back your loans as a teacher. Yeah. Or, oh, well, actually, there's something called, like, if you serve X amount of years in a public good... Volunteering. Like, volunteering function or, yeah. like 
service function like yeah, i think some hospitals or basically work for free work for free type of stuff then your loan is forgiven but it's never actually been proven at this point because that program is not 10 years old yet so who knows if that's actually mm -hmm. going to be effective yeah, absolutely from an economic free market perspective being a teacher is gonna not be in your cards like this is a yeah. clearly suboptimal move please don't do it even if they have a strong demand for math teachers you would rather work in industry than to be getting paid something like 40k off or not be paid and have to do an internship for two years and you have to work how on do you do that not to mention the fact you're working on the weekends you're grading the, the tests on the evenings mm -hmm. of the weekdays like and this is not a thing that you can just get in and then you're done you have to get recertified you have to go for more schooling this is a really bad deal for teachers mm -hmm. and so the question is why don't they get paid more because clearly when a teacher drops out, you just get the next one in. Because from the system's perspective, all I care about is a warm body that's able to get the result I want as a principal, which is to be able to go to the district to say that my test scores are this high, I get the budget back and like the factory moves on. And so I look at it, if you want to start paying teachers more as a group of people, we have to wonder what our priorities are. Because if you levy a tax to say, look, I want to start putting more property tax into the school, most people would be like, oh, I don't want to pay for some bloated administrator. And the state, you the, don't the want teachers to. Teachers, a bloated administrator? No, 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 no. The administration behind that. Sure, sure. Which yeah. does need to happen. It does. It does. You have to have yeah. people that aren't just in the classrooms teaching the kids. You need everything else that makes that whole system run. But you also don't and like... And they get paid up. They do. They get paid more than adjunct professors yeah. do. It's a silly it's a skill system. Set, but it's a skill set that's... But it's something you're taking away from the know, corporate world, so you have to be competitive. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's strange that we have a union that represents the teachers, but the burden is going to be on the taxpayers to pay for the service. At the end of the day, it's like a very twisted, convoluted, not very clear... It's a public good, but you're using market forces, but you have to make a, them pay for a degree that is supposed what if it was, to be... What, what if it was a federal stipend to state educators and only to teachers, not to the adjuncts, not to the people managing it, and not from local taxpayers? A sales tax where certain stupid. things go up a percentage to have a fund that equally distributes based on number of schools and per state. I don't know if people would buy it because you... There's so many things wrong with this system that a tax... Again, I'm living Having... in Utopia where there's... Right. Some... But <laughs> I'm, I'm just looking at this from one perspective is that if I was a person that had to get pay more for my can of soda, even if it's like a penny and I'm really like principled person, I guess, I'm like, oh, where's that penny going? It's like, oh, it's going to directly to the teachers as a very clear cut bill because we recognize that this kind of sucks for them. And I'm like, well... I don't want to do that because the teachers union only protects bad teachers. And then so it's like, okay, well then we'll dismantle the teachers union. It's like, well, actually that's one of the best incentives they have for people to get in. You know, like this whole game of Jenga is so shaky. Stop being my uncle Rick. <laughs> Drunk uncle Rick. Can you explain how he you doesn't mean? drink at all? That's the worst art. <laughs> Sober else. uncle Rick. Can you, can you think about drinking? Maybe it would help. Here's some whiskey. Just call the fuck. Oh God's worse. I, I agree that they should be paid more. I have no idea how to do it without like in, <laughs> changing this terrible game of the system that is so odd and bizarre and such a monster that we all had to go through with just a very head scratching experience about like, what was that for? I hope my employers don't listen to this. Oh, well, they will. <laughs> Four years of education. And then if someone asked me, hey, what was the second fundamental theory of calculus? I'd be like, I don't know. Hey, four years of education. Hey, are you using right. it's anything like, um, you... Like, you took calculus. No, no. Not right. It's like, <laughs> I was like, did I take... Can I look at my transcripts? Hey, I took employer? calculus like, too. And, uh, I did I, Well, <laughs> let me just say the professor was awful. The worst. Like over 30 kids in this class. By mid-semester, I think there was like nine people left in that class. That's a <laughs> bad teacher. Yeah. I had this great thing where my... That's a bad teacher. He had tenure, though. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, bad. But that's my... my bitterness. Secondary math experience was at a community college and I transferred to university. And there was a day, I will not forget, where math teacher went minus 27 plus 9 is minus 36. Oh, oh no. Mm. And as soon as he did that, I put my pencil down and I'm like... Nope. <laughs> and then I looked down because I was in this community college with five people I went to high school with. And I'm looking down. It's just in steps. People realize that, like, no. <laughs> wait a minute. Except for my buddy at the end, 
Not the brightest bulb, bulb in the shed. He was just, yep, just fervently writing down everything he was doing. <laughs> and I come to find out later that he only has masters and that was tenuous and he had oh, failed God. getting his doctorate oh. four times. Yeah, that's that's a bad Yeah. Okay. For for the listeners Yeah, but he tries. He's got he's gotta drive. Apparently a lot of money too. No, because he got into that teacher game where like this uh, is the only way I'm gonna make money on what I went into because I'm clearly too dumb to do anything practical uh, with my master's. Too dumb to pick a better occupation. Like, yeah. Like you can take that anywhere. You don't have to be teacher buddy. And I'm saying this with a history major with my current profession. I mean, so I know stupid fair. choices. Hey, you know what? I'm an artist and I did not go to school for art. Alright. For the listeners, I just don't want to be like the slash I am very smart. Like, oh look at that guy, he's talking about math. Like my We've sister- seen his math, it's real bad. Well yeah. done, Phil. Well done. You, math teacher. you went to school for the thing you're doing now. Good job. Well good job. I just wanna say that my do, it was do we call fucking? No. Yeah. Okay. I'm not jealous. The rest of the call <laughs> They recognize just how terrible my simple math is, so let's just move on. <laughs> but the thing is, <laughs> your, yeah, your math is far superior to ours. Uh, I haven't used mine in like I don't know ten some years. Yeah. When was the last time you solved for X? I, oh, all the time. Really? I don't know. That's kind of like my my opinion is. I, I really do think that the teachers should get paid more. They, they, I just don't know of a good mechanism that doesn't upset the apple cart and. But we might need to for the sake of making a better apple cart. Eh, we should just go back to the apprentice, master apprentice age. Where everyone has indentured. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Let's have 80% of our populace doing <laughs> yep. non-skilled labor. Exactly. It's perfect. <laughs> Woo! That's just, so great in this day and age. We need non-skilled, like plumbers and shit we actually need. No, you need a master to be a plumber and apprentice. You don't. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Fix your toilet. I have. I have replaced my toilet. I watched a YouTube video, man. Okay. I've done right. So you're saying now we need the I master put, okay. as YouTube? No. I'm a homeowner, right? I had some issues in my lower <laughs> basement toilet. I don't know what they were thinking when they installed this in the 70s, but they didn't put a flange in. Wow. So I called a plumber to see what, you know, they would say. Basically, I paid $90 for yeah, advice yeah. because... They're gonna, you know, hundred bucks well, or whatever, hey, to, just to come out, for right. semester. just to come out. Fair and enough. then he quoted me like five hundred dollars to fix it or to put a flange in and you know put all that. And I'm like, oh hell no, five hundred dollars? I can just go to fucking Home Depot, drill t- two holes in my cement floor, and put in a flange myself for like fifteen dollars. Just need a hammer drill and a bit. Like, I had the hammer bit. drill. Yeah, and you did. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Why don't you be the Claire? What am I supposed to do? Provide the bid? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars for a five hundred dollar service, and I can figure it out. It's not rocket science. But here's the thing: if you had 20... messed up, if you had messed up on that, you would have to pay for the whole repair. Eh. <laughs> eh? I mean, eh? no, no, the because pl- honestly. The water's turned off. If I messed up on it, I'd, you know, like, I'd flush it once, and then there would be a toilet bowl full of water on the floor. And that would be it. Okay. So I would just try how, again. It's how, literally water, right? Water. Sure, sure. <laughs> but the... It's not difficult. It, 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 it's the same. Like, diff- my dad, given his everyman attitude coming up from the pull yourself up by your bootstraps because you really like laying on your back kind of thing, he is an amateur plumber, electrician, Electricity is a little different. Worker. I feel like electricity, you electricity, have a little bit of a risk of death there. Water. It, it has more facts to it. True. Water, you have bigger issues. Not and really. I'm saying this because he installed plumbing in a house and uh, didn't insulate it properly. And somehow my dog got into the basement okay. and flooded half of our basement. Yeah, I would no, say. Well, that's different. That's, that's doing the whole house. I just replaced a toilet. A toilet's really simple. The piping in a house is a little more complex. I, so that's I, more like circuit board. I feel like we took the bait because, like, we know. <laughs> I did. Yeah. The Stop floor. reeling in over there. Yeah, because... Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you reeling in. Okay. I did. All I'm right. Like, because we know that plumbers are extremely useful for major projects around the house, mm-hmm. like a kitchen addition, or in our case, we had done things. We want a whole new section of the bathroom, and I'm not going to be able to dig a trench and get this pipe through here. True. And That's it's like, different. That's and these are harder. things that took a long time for the apprentice plumber that gave us a deal because the master plumber was like, I'll cut you a deal. I'm going to train this guy under me and, but this will work for you and I'll be there to inspect his work. Are you okay with that? I'm like, yes, here's the money. And I don't care. <laughs> oh, too. Yeah. And it turns 60% of what I should pay. Yes. 
And I only had to call them twice afterwards for repair, so it wasn't so bad. <laughs> and twice. Call me for references for those. These guys are great. So the problem I have is that, like... Hey, my toilets are working great. <laughs> we haven't had a problem. <laughs> the problem I have is that, like, we have a strong need for this type of master-apprentice system, but it just doesn't scale very well. Not and for it teachers. It seems like a very silly thing, because there's not a lot of that, like... Okay, what is that? Maybe plumbing and, uh, and the trades. But like, if you talk to the people that are in that, the argument that they make is like, it's heavy lifting and it's not yes. an indoor job. The comment that uh, my parents told me, it's like, you don't want to be in the trades because it's going to ruin your body, yeah. right? And you want to have an indoor job with no heavy lifting and that's a pretty good life. And now like you fast forward and apparently every parent told that to their kids. So yeah. everyone's yeah. trying to rush for like... You, you wonder why gyms are on every goddamn corner of every street? It's because nobody has an outdoor lifting job. Except for the people who do. Well, there, there goes right. my other idea here. I mean, I mean granted, <laughs> I've, I've blown out one of my knees because of like the delivery shit I did in my early 20s. Working in a warehouse-ish job, not the worst thing in the world. But I feel that since every parent said that, nobody's going into trade schools. Yeah. And we're having a major deficit in trade skills. And that's why it's so skills. dang expensive to have yeah. a plumber come out and quote you $500 yeah. for literally $15 of work. But well, it's, well, it's labor. $15 for the equipment. Yeah, and then you the have labor. it where it's... 20 bucks for an hour? Uh, no. It's like 70 bucks yeah, Exactly. An hour. Because well, of its want and desire, yeah. as opposed to having it actually and actually, aggregated. I say 70 bucks an hour, but I'm like, it's probably more than that. It's yeah, probably like right. 100 bucks an hour. Which I find... Or our, more. A dude, had to, when I was in college, had to come and, like, snake out our plumbing. Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it was a half hour of work for 150 bucks. Right. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> for... That. But for college, we have co hangers, we can make this work <laughs> kind of thing. Jean, also, Jean there, are the like cool, there are like really cool things you can buy for like literally a dollar that you can just <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Gone. But there was like three inches, in my to- three inches in my tub, and someone had the bright idea of using the plunger to try and suck it out, and then oh, got a bunch of fecal matter in there, too. Ooh. Ooh. Nope, wait, who in the hell? Not me. If I ever use the plunger, you Who wash is... that shit out. Okay, I'm sorry. This isn't your, what, your shower? Your bathtub? Yeah. Who the fuck is doing waffle stumps in your fucking shower? No, no, no. Just in the plunger. So you use the plunger to clean out the, uh, the toilet. Okay, you're trying... Okay, toilet. And, yeah. Then you then you put it back, but using the plunger in the tub. Yeah, but why... You shouldn't have fecal matter in your plunger. That's disgusting. If you disgusting. don't wash it, then that could be a little bit of stuff on the inside, you, plus whatever's what on the outside of the water. Plunger if you don't clean it, I don't know. It... Deal with the biologist. They currently aren't here. Mm. I just want to say, ironically, so that, problems with this. Um, if I had to re-roll and have a new job, I think garbage man would be like a pretty sweet gig. No, but not if you. It, well, if you have a sense of smell, it's not. No, no, no. But even you rarely ever leave your truck. Right? Disagree. No, I don't. If well, you're in a big city, you rarely ever leave your truck. Okay. If they have good gear. You're yeah. talking about the truck drivers, not right. like... No, no, dealing those are the garbage men. But I mean, I'm not... The t- ones with the like two prongs that... But you're not dealing with... You're not working at the landmine itself. No, no, you're not looking... Yeah. Okay. I would say that that's actually that's a pretty good a return of investment that you pay... F- they pay for your labor. You get in, you get out. You... Like, I'm sure that yeah, but get there's, there's also no investment in your education to do that other than, like, a B license. Right. Yeah. And I think that I find it ironic that teachers back in the day, like when dinosaurs were when I was a kid, <laughs> they had said something like, oh, if you, if, oh you, if you don't do well in school, you'll just be a garbage man. And then, like, fast forward to today's time, I'm like, you sons yeah. of bitches. Like, that's actually <laughs> a pretty good pretty, return of investment. You, make, you and, make 60 grand base because nobody wants to right. do it. It's like, this is a really decent life, and this is a service that needs to be done, and I people mean, need to like, get their... I mean, this yeah. is 4 o'clock to 2, but you still have most of your evening. That's not gonna, a bad thing if you can just shift your life to this. Yeah, yeah to I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. I think I'm going to take up mushroom farming, you guys. You <laughs> need a good source of cow manure, it's as like well this. as, like, really nice hydroponics. Anyway, next time on Isn't It Obvious... Isn't it obvious that being a cocaine dealer is the best drug dealer? This is not anyway, next time. This no, is don't know. Unsanctioned. Poor choices. It's totally not <laughs> next time. And also, I just want to thank my mom for telling me to be, you know, good at math, I guess. And even to not do drugs. Really. Say no. Say no to drugs, folks. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom.